is really fast. Are we ready? Okay. Good evening. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Urbana City Council. It's a special meeting. Will the clerk please call the roll? City Council Members Brown. Here. Hazen. Here. Percy. Here. Jacobson. Here. Miller. Here. Roberts. <laughs> Here. Wu. Here. Mayor Marlin. Here. Next up is public input. I have two cards. One is from Eldris Melinda Carr, wishes to express continued concerns about the Dr. Ellis subdivision sewer issues, equity, and historic input. And the other is Bishop King James and Reverend Dr. Evelyn Underwood, who would also wish to express concerns about the Dr. Ellis subdivision sewer issues. And then I have a card from Matt Cho, who wishes to address the council at the time of the agenda item. Staff report. It's a business and development port from Will Kolchowski from Economic Development. Thank you. Uh, yeah, William Kolchowski, Economic Development Specialist. Um, Libby's on vacation, so I'll be giving the business development report for the past month. Um, going through some of the development updates, uh, the first thing to note is... Uh, is your mic on? I'm sorry. It's green. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'll try to speak closer. Very yeah. Much better. Uh, Gather, so Real Devel Development uh, has proposed a five-story mixed-use development on the corner of University and Lincoln, and this uh, will be a, it'll contain about 200 apartments, uh, 16 townhouses on the south side of Clark Street, and then there'll be a 50 extended stay, extended stay rooms along with about 15,000 square feet of lobby, retail, and outdoor public areas. And um, to date, the configuration is uh, a result of a collaboration between the developer, the city staff, uh, neighborhood feedback, and Rails team of developments. And the project um, hopes to activate a key gateway into the University of Illinois and the city of Urbana. Uh, moving on for development updates, Zatara, uh, the building permit for repairs at 114th South Ray Street uh, has passed finals, uh, final, final inspection and has been issued a certificate of occupancy. And the restaurant oper operators will be fitting out the space uh, and completing their health department inspections in the upcoming weeks and plan to open soon thereafter. Uh, 25 o'clock at 208 West Greg Street has finished their tap rooms, uh, finished their tap room, and CNC Kitchen has announced that they'll be selling uh, out of their food truck between 5 and 9 p.m. And then also at 208 West Greg Street, the Best of Africa food store has finished their uh, expansion and renovation of the grocery store. And then just moving down the list a little bit, uh, Pixo, uh, they've consolidated some of their office space in downtown uh, Urbana so that uh, they're all on the second story of about 110 uh, West Main Street, and so that opens <coughs> up the space on Goose Alley, and that's about 3,000 square feet. Uh, for new business updates, uh, um, Lincoln Square has added, continues to add new business with Defy Gravity uh, relocating from Champaign, and Defy Gravity is an aerial arts and pole fitness studio. Uh, similarly, uh, Happy Jack Hat Company has opened up uh, Gregory Place, and they focus on selling fashion, lifestyle, streetwear, ball caps, winter wear, and other headwear. And then just on other news, the economic development staff held our TIF Joint Review Board and Enterprise Zone Advisory Board meetings in January. And then also related to economic development, the City of Urbana uh, has its Poet Laureate Program, uh, which celebrates poetry by recognizing a resident poet who makes a meaningful connections, honors, and serves our diverse community and elevates the importance of the creative writing art form through sharing their work with Urbana residents. And the applications for the Poet Laureate Program are due this Friday at 5 p.m. And also the Arts Grants uh, applications are due at that time as well. Um, for the rest of the report, uh, as far as the charts and graphs, it's the first of the month, so the year-to-date figures are all generally pretty low or zero at this time. So that's kind of in line with past years. So unless there's any other questions, that's all I have. Questions for Will? Mary Ellis. Thank you very much for the report. Um, I was wondering with the development on Lincoln and University Avenue, if they'll be going uh, in front of the Zoning or Planning Commission? So they went uh, to the Planning Commission on Thursday, okay. and they should be before you all uh, in an upcoming. 
soon, in the yeah. upcoming <laughs> meeting. Yeah. Um, and then my, my second question is, have there been any businesses that have closed in the past month? Uh, I, not that I know of, no. Okay, thank you. Sharice? Um, you were talking about that there's going to be a retail. What type of retail is going to be a gather? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, they just have the space identified as uh, something to lease out, but they don't have any tenants yet. Okay. From what we were told, it's a um, to serve the tenants and guests of the hotel or the apartment building. Okay. Eric. Um, just with uh, respect to gather, um, I know there's something about the wording here. Uh, I would not say, I would not characterize the interactions between the neighborhood and the other, uh, you know, players in this as a collaboration. Um, I think neighbors have raised some serious questions about the scale and uh, those questions remain. Uh, so um, I would I would word it differently. Certainly, the neighborhood has been informed, no question about that, and the neighborhood has engaged in discussion with the city staff and with uh, the developer. Uh, but I would not say that those discussions. I would not characterize those discussions as a collaboration. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bill, and then Dennis. Um, just on the uh, statistics for Think Urbana, it says 47 projects and 231 units. Do you know how a project's defined? Is it a building permit or a parcel or? Yeah, so uh, as far as the enterprise zone goes, um, they're project-based, so if somebody is building multiple homes at one time, we count that as one project. Um, so there's the enterprise zone application, and so it just kind of depends on uh, what the builder is doing at one time. Generally, for single family homes, it's you know one project, one unit, but uh, for example, in Stone Creek, there's been developers who have built multiple units at one time. Um, so it's kind of hard to translate projects into units because it, it varies. Okay. Um, it'd be really useful, I think, to break that out. I know when we passed it, it was supposed to apply to eligible single family, zero lot line townhome and duplex residential projects. So if we could get that broken out into those three categories, and then it sounds like there's probably a other <laughs> category that doesn't fit into one of those three. So um, that would be helpful to kind of see, uh, you know, how, how, how it's uh, accomplishing the goals we set out when we passed it. Thank you. Anything? Yeah, I mean, just it's it'd just be like for number of units mostly. So I'd, I'd really be interested in how many single-family homes uh, out of those 231 units, how many actual homes resulted, how many units resulted in something someone can buy. Because the, the whole emphasis of that Think Urbana project was to <coughs> increase the availability of um, homes for purchase. Um, so that I think that'd be a useful number to have. Okay. Dennis. Yeah. There are two um, uh, buildings that are being erected right now in uh, their near downtown that aren't on this report, and I don't know if that's because there's not a, uh, an agreement with the city about these, but I'm curious about what looks like to be a, um, um, a quick stop on East Main Street um, in about the 700 block. I think we should be reporting on that. That's partly built, and that I think appeared in the newspaper. Tom Kasich uh, answered a, mm -hmm. a question about that, but we've never talked about it, and it's right in our community. Yeah, so the, the updates are just changes from the previous month. I think I'm pretty sure the, that convenience store location has been, um, at least in the map updates in the past. Oh. Um, but I mean, that's kind of buried and hard to find, but, cause, but yeah. It hasn't opened yet, and we're still looking at it. Construction and then the other one is uh, just uh, on Cunningham Avenue, um, just north of uh, Walgreens. Yeah, that's the um, OSF clinic that's going in. I think OSF oh clinic. Yeah, it's a urgent care facility, yeah. um, and I think that also probably falls into the category where it's probably been buried in that map uh, update somewhere. But we haven't had a 
you know, I'll have it listed out in the uh, top section yet. Okay, great. Thanks. It's, it's been on previous reports. I don't think it just looked like it was going to be a, a hospital clinic to me, so yeah. I, yeah. that's why I asked about it. We'll do an update when they're done, for sure. Any other questions for Will? Jared. Where's uh, Defy Gravity going in Lincoln Square? Um, I don't know if the particular space off the top of my head. Next to the Capoeira studio, across from um, the African food oh, restaurant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, it cool. It was a lawyer. It was a l law firm. The, the law firm over there in the corner. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Will. I had just a brief information item okay. that I could do Carol. now. I'm going to try and pinch it for Scott Tess. He'll be here next week. To uh, to bring an item before you, but uh, this is just a this is just a little information piece about what's coming. So our energy broker has made us aware of an opportunity to um, aggregate our and when I say our, I mean the city government's um, natural gas purchasing with other communities and potentially save money by doing um, an aggregated purchase. And so um, the information that has been provided so far looks like that would be something that we would want to participate in. And so next uh, week we'll be bringing a resolution to you that would authorize the mayor to enter into um, a, an agreement that would um, put, put our natural gas um, supply out for bid with other communities. So more on that next week when Scott's here. But I'll, if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them. Questions? Okay. This is gas for the um, city facilities only. It's not a red residential program like the uh, electric aggregation is. Right. Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Any other staff reports? Okay. One item of old business is ordinance number 2018-11-073 which is an ordinance approving a major variance at 401 North Broadway Avenue. We'll have staff report, then I have um, one public input card on this, and then we'll have discussion. Uh, good evening. The screen is supposed to be blank. That's the, the first slide. Um, okay, I uh, just wanted to, to briefly recap this case. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will recall this case. Um, it was brought to you in early November. Um, and essentially, uh, there's a, a variance request for the Broadway Food Hall. Um, the, uh, uh, the parking lot at the Broadway Food Hall was striped in a way that's not um, consistent with the standards of the zoning ordinance um, and the request is essentially to uh, allow the parking lot to remain as is. Um, since that uh, since that meeting uh, in November uh, we've we've talked to to the property owner um, uh, several times um, we've also met with them and we've tried to work out uh, some sort of a, a compromise um, but ultimately um, Ultimately, we offered to share costs on closing the curb cut, um, but we've had no substantial commitment from the property owner um, at this time. And um, we are still open to, to sharing costs. Um, we're, we're concerned uh, mostly with safety at this site, um, with the wide driveway uh, being left open. Um, we consider that to be a, a safety hazard. Um, so we'd be willing to, uh, to still share costs on that, um, but we'd just like to see um, the safety issues resolved. Um, Procedurally, variances have essentially a 120-day clock uh, from the time that the zoning board makes a recommendation to the city council. Um, there's a 120-day clock for the council to uh, vote on that. I think now we're on about day 117. So um, there, there needs to be a council vote tonight. Otherwise, the, re the variance request would be um, approved automatically. Um, so essentially, um, in this case, I'm going to run through some, some photos of what the, the parking lot looks like um, 
uh, these days. Um, but essentially, as I said, what the, what the property owner wants is to leave the parking as is. So you'll see this is looking north on Broadway. Um, you can see the parking lot on the left side of the picture. Um, you'll note that, um, that all the parking spaces you can see um, on the left side there uh, are right next to the sidewalk. Um, there's nothing uh, preventing cars from parking over the sidewalk. Um, in this picture, you see this is during a lightly used time of day. Um, but still, there's a safety concern. There is a, a wide driveway right here um, that we'd like to see closed. Um, and when it's, you know, when it's open like this, cars can pull in this way. Cars can pull out this way. You can have folks pulling out past cars that are already parked there, uh, creating a dangerous situation. Um, if you're walking by on the sidewalk, if you're standing in the parking lot, if you've just gotten out of your car, et cetera. Um, during um, busier times, we've noticed that cars will uh, park over the sidewalk. Um, obviously, with snow and things in this picture, the, the sidewalk's not terribly passable as is, but you'll note that several cars are parked over the sidewalk. Um, if you were a person trying to get by here in a, in a wheelchair, for instance, um, it might be uh, difficult or impossible to get past those, those cars, um, especially up by that fire hydrant there. Um, this is during an uh, even busier time uh, of day. Uh, and we've noticed this case a few times. There are, so these cars that are parking adjacent to the, to the bike lane, you can see those cars are actually blocking the sidewalk. Um, partially or completely. Um, another time, um, you can see these cars are just blocking the sidewalk. Um, and this is, um, you know, for, for accessibility, this is an issue um, for safety. Um, it's also an issue to have, have folks parking across the sidewalk as well. And for good measure, here's another one on, on yet another night. Um, so if the parking lot uh, remains as is with the driveway open as is, we could expect to see uh, more of the same uh, parking parking wise. Um, so that is uh, essentially the request would be to allow it to remain like that. Um, what staff is proposing, um, and this is outlined in your memo, um, it's also diagrammed um, here. I apologize if you're watching at home or in the audience if you can't read this diagram. Um, but essentially, this lays out the, uh, the conditions that, that staff is recommending um, for this variance request. So the first one would be to um, allow a variance for two spots here on the north side. This is something we discussed um, quite a bit, um, I think, at the meeting in November, and most folks seemed comfortable with it. Um, staff is also comfortable with it. So you'd allow a variance to allow these two spots. They would be employee only, compact only. Um, those would back out onto Broadway Avenue. Um, the second piece is um, there would be bollards or uh, planters or being placed in the uh, two northernmost parking spots, and those would um, block those spots because they're extremely small, um, and that would prevent their use um, by uh, to park automobiles. Uh, number three would be for all of these spaces that are adjacent to the sidewalk, um, we'd ask that wheel stops be required for those spaces to prevent cars from parking over the sidewalk um, at all. Um, and then finally, uh, number four would be to close the driveway uh, to install a curb and streetscape that would match the existing. Um, one one final note, uh, which which we talked about in November, is that the for variance requests, there's a series of, of criteria, and we as staff did not feel that this request met those variance criteria. Continue to to think that they do not meet those criteria. Um, so I just wanted to make that note. But that concludes my report, and and I'll take any questions if you have them. Could we um, get the public input first, and then we'll do questions sure. and discussion? Yeah. Thank you. Matt Cho? Yes. 
You have five minutes. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Matt Cho. I'm representing the property owners as well as uh, the business owners uh, for Broadway Food Hall, Broadway Food Group, and Broadway Market LLC. Um, I guess first and foremost, I've worked with the city for a long time on multiple projects, and I can say that, I mean, with my history here, like, I think they're getting it wrong. And I mean, there have been times where I believe council has agreed with that, that staff oftentimes do not get things right. Um, the design here uh, has been framed as a danger to the health and safety of pedestrians and bicyclists. But for those of us that back out of driveways every day to go to work, uh, that is a normal thing that we do every day. And in fact, having been there at the business every day, because this is something that I have to run and pay attention to, uh, we noticed that actually pulling out face forward onto the street has caused zero accidents since we've striped a lot. Zero accidents. And during the time that we opened January of last year, there were two reported accidents, as well as probably uncountless numbers of complaints of how bad the parking was. Since then, we've had no parking complaints and no accidents. So this idea that there is a health or a, a, a safety hazard that's imminent, I believe, is something that's being framed to make this more a stronger case. Um, secondly, some of the pictures that were presented, uh, that is one night. It's not multiple nights. Um, so in, just to correct Kevin, that is one night from two different angles. Um, I guess the other thing is that <clears throat> being a business owner, there are a lot of things that we have to pay attention to, and there's a lot of things that we can invest our money in. Unfortunately, I guess the compromise that was presented, I would like to redefine, just as Eric described, collaboration. This was not a compromise. This was more or less a firm demand from the city. They have always been animate. Public Works has always been adamant about creating a curb. And from the get-go, we said, this is something that neither the business nor the property owners can afford. We cannot afford a $20,000 curb. We have equipment. We have building improvements. We have things that we need to do to, to basically run a business that treats customers the way that we need to run our business. And so with that said, like, I know that the, the, having read the zoning, I guess, report or the presentation, the idea is that there needs to be a curb due to the health and safety. I disagree. Secondly, it is a cost that neither the pr property owners nor the business can, can afford. And for a business that's been open barely less than a year, to actually require this is almost impossible. And so with that said, if that is the decision that's going to be upheld by council, we went through the normal process of applying for a variance, just like any other business or resident does when they are out of compliance with the, with the ordinance. And we have gone through multiple scenarios, even with the lawyer and our architect, to present cases where even those four cases, those four spots to the north, should not even be part of this packet. Those are actually existing non-conforming uses that, that aren't even part of Broadway Food Home. That's a side note, but the fact is, is that a lot of this conversation around parking and its safety hazard to bicyclists, pedestrians, is almost fabricated to support the idea that a curb needs to be built. In fact, closing off that curb will require people to back out into a small lot and will probably cause more accidents. And so unless the city is comfortable with creating a situation like that, I would say I am, as a business owner and property owner, I am out of ideas. We try to create the best situation as possible, but I think at this point, I'm just waiting for direction from council or staff. Okay. Um, thank you, Matt. Staff like to come back up? We have questions for staff. Dennis? Yeah, I guess. Oh, there he is. I can take them here unless you need me up there for any of the exhibits. No, that's right. Okay. Uh, so one of the things that came up in this discussion is um, that the uh, zoning, the planning board um, recommended, made a recommendation to council, correct? Correct. And uh, we now we've, we've also uh, read in our memos that um, uh, some of the recommendations, which seem to me um, very logical, um, cannot be accomplished. Can you explain um, why and what what conflict there would be from accepting the recommendation from the Planning Commission? Um, so the recommendation from the Zoning Board. Zoning um, Board, not Planning Commission. Yes, uh, their recommendation was to only require wheel stops um, in the spaces that are next to the sidewalks. 
um, if wheel stops were were installed there, um, the city code um, or we would consider that driveway to be then unused because you couldn't use that as a driveway anymore. Um, and then, according to city code, you would have to close the driveway. So, if wheel stops were required, the driveway would need to be closed. Um, so, the uh, the zoning board's recommendation essentially said you need to do something that would go against city code, um, and that's not something that a variance can can be used for. So, are you saying that the council doesn't have any um, uh, power to uh, adopt a solution which might actually convey? Uh, convey a, uh, a useful solution both for the businessman and for the safety of the pedestrians because it would be against the code of the city? Well, through a variance, um, that I don't think that would be a possibility unless, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. Generally, you are correct. A variance to the zoning ordinance can be created but you can't use a variance to vary some other part of Urbana's city code. All right, so um, what tool does the city council have to make um, a decision that might, um, uh, what would the word be? Mutually um, agreeable. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, mutually agreeable, but um, uh, you know, we, we, we offer exemptions in some cases to some issues. Can we offer an exemption? I don't see how without changing the city ordinance, which is outside the zoning code at this point in time, and there's no proposed change here. It's not, here's the problem that I see from a practical and risk management standpoint outside the general analytical purview of the ordinances. If you put wheel stops in, there's nothing to prevent cars, whether it's one night or 50 nights, from parking on the sidewalk. We have evidence, pictorial evidence, that staff has presented that shows cars parking on the sidewalk, not over the sidewalk with you know, maybe a foot of vehicle hanging over onto the sidewalk, but completely blocking the sidewalk. So cars can pull in, and then depending on which direction they're gonna head, north or south, when they pull out, they will be backing out directly onto Broadway, a whole series of cars, not just one car pulling out of a residential driveway. Right, I got you on that. And I do see the evidence pictorially in some of the photographs. All right, so um, I have things to maybe discuss, but this is uh, questions for, for um, uh, community development, so I'm going to stop here. Bill. Um, were you able to check to see if there was room to put in one or two street parking spots there? Um, I believe I asked Public Works, and they uh, said that street parking would not be allowed there, but... I know Craig Schonkweiler is here, so he could probably address that question. I know. I think I asked last time, and you mentioned it might be too close to the railroad tracks. We also still need a curb. <coughs> yeah, I think um, that would be an unusual situation with its proximity to the tracks. I mean, I, we'd have to look into it more, but um, that would be the only parking north of the uh, railroad tracks on that side, which doesn't mean that it can occur, but we also are adjacent to a bike lane. And being adjacent to a bike lane, that's something that, as we know through our installation of bike lanes through the city, that it's not the best to have <coughs> bike lanes adjacent to parallel parking. Yeah, yeah, opening the doors into the bike lanes. I, the only reason I asked was because they do have it just south of the railroad tracks in front of the Timponi building, kind of the same situation, but right. uh, it's not, not ideal. Right. Questions? Eric and then Mary Alice. So this is 
hard. And I guess I'd go way back a little bit farther in history because the reason that this business got into this trouble is because they improved the parking lot by striping it. Uh, so, and I understand, I think, the legal issue with respect to approving an arrangement that violates a municipal ordinance which was presumably crafted for safety reasons and therefore puts us in a horrible liability position. So, you know, I, I'm, the amount of money that's involved in putting in the curb is $15,000 according to, I think, the most recent memo. Is that right, Kevin? Um, it, it would be 20000 which would include engineering costs. Um, those numbers were only uh, for a partial closure. Um, and I'm not sure if we, Craig, do we have any estimate on what a full closure would cost? Well, would, would, would the numbers that were put into our memo, which was 15000 uh, would that satisfy the ordinance? If it it would because it would it would partially close that curb it would take out a few spaces and just leave it as a as an access drive. And oh, oh, so that's different from totally close. That actually leaves the driveway open. The Par partially, thousand. partially. It's yeah. Exhibit Five in your packet. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Is it, <laughs> yeah, and the look this? closely enough. It, yeah, it's the, it should be the last. Uh, I would slide. I would just hasten to add that the fifteen thousand was, was the number it? that we were going to we, we were going to split with the property owner. We were going to bear the cost of the engineering work, and then we would split the the um, construction costs. And um, what Craig had estimated was if we had done if we did the work, um, that was with prevailing wage and so forth. And we thought we might actually get it done for less than that, but. Just so you have the whole picture, we never actually got a response to the offer, so we never right. had a full dialogue about it. And and so if there's a mm -hmm. if there's another possible compromise, you know, we, we would entertain something. Um, so I guess I'm wondering at this point, Matt, if you have a response at this time to that financial, the, the proposed financial arrangement. Yeah, the, ans the answer to that is simply no. We can't afford it. I've spoken to both the business owners, the property owners. I'm a third ownership in that. Mm -hmm. So we will not, we cannot afford to pay for any kind of curb cutout, let alone I think part of the compromise was that I manage the project. I have no capacity or time to manage a construction project. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have to run a business. And, and I don't I think, think that was that yeah. was not the understanding. You would not have to manage the construction project. I think the understanding that I got was that I would take the project because it's cheaper for me to do it on the private side. That I, I can't. I don't. I don't have any kind of city construction experience, nor do I want to actually take that role because I have to run my business. That I was have a way five of businesses that, that was a I have way of run. mitigating cost. I mean, we could run, we could do the project, but then it would be at a higher at right. a higher cost, which I, we could do. I guess my point is is that when I applied for the variance, I asked for it to keep the lot as is. And during that time, Jim interjected and said that there was a lot of problems with that. And so the zoning board added the wheel stops, which made the whole variance illegal, I guess is where we're at right now. And so really my simple request was to keep the parking lot as is. And I understand why that is no longer a solution, mm -hmm. but that is what the variance allows. Unfortunately, because the, the ZBA presented with wheel stops, that's where we have the problems now. Um, so if it's a matter of the city saying you need to take away the, the, the parking, then I am, that is what I need to hear, and that's what I will do. Um, but at this point, it's just like we, as business owners or even property owners, we cannot afford to pay for a city curb that is, I guess, has all the aesthetics and stuff that's not a normal curb. 
Okay. Yeah. Is this a question for Matt or for staff? Well, kind of both. <laughs> Because well, I'm, I guess I'm confused because he's talking about a city, you're talking about a curb, and he's talking about wheel stops. Are we talking about the same thing? No. No. Okay. They, wheel stops are not allowed, and that's what makes this, this approval from ZVA complicated, is but that the, putting the wheel stops, you require to close the curb. But other than that, then, sir, you will be blocking from time to time a sidewalk, a pedestrian sidewalk, also you will be uh, in the way of a fire hydrant. You're, you're mm -hmm. am, I, am I correct? Uh, okay, yeah. and so, but you want the variance for, for the city to keep this parking even though you will be blocking pedestrian traffic as well as the possibility of a fire hydrant being used, correct? Am I, I don't know about the fire hydrant, but as, as far well, as I know, since the we- the pictures that I saw yeah. had, had cars in front of a so, fire hydrant. So it would block the fire hydrant, but what I can do is I can return the parking lot to, if that's the city's decision, I can return the parking lot to as we have the plans approved, which is to remove all those parking spaces. And that's what I just need to hear. But if you just put, so you said that just putting the wheel stops, this is, I'm trying to understand this, that putting the wheel stops, even though that's the compromise, am I correct? No, no that's not the compromise. Can't do it. Okay. Can't do it. No, the, the our preferred solution is to close the curb completely and to add wheel stops. But if only wheel stops were, were added, uh, especially during winter time, it would cause issues because people would see a driveway, especially people who are used to going there. Mm -hmm. They'll see a driveway and you just drive up and hit the, the wheel stop. Um, so that's an issue that we don't want to, you know, that we don't want to allow. Um, um, Mary Alice had a question. So um, I'm just thinking about my own house, and occasionally I will stop and block the sidewalk for a second, and I, uh, or I'll have somebody who will come up and do that. Really, I mean, first of all, it's it's not Matt who's driving all the cars and putting them in in bad spots. Um, so I think it's it's more the people that are coming to visit the business. Um, but if somebody is parking blocking the sidewalk the city can find them right i mean we can we can give them a ticket and that's what we do with any other illegal and they blocking can be towed the sidewalk. as well correct? and they can be is that correct i mean the city can do that yes um so my question to matt is um i know that we've gone back and forth in terms of uh what we can and cannot do and i think i heard last time that you were here that you were open to closing the two very small spots on the uh north side of the lot those four little spots the two that are most north i thought that you were open to that the, the ones towards the right bottom corner of the picture of the correct so i mean this is a kind of a those parking spaces i guess according to the existing building should remain as spaces. They've just kind of been thrown in as part of this conversation. They are, they are non conforming existing uses, though. But as part of the compromise, that's what I was willing to do is like if I could keep that as employee parking, that, you know, maybe there was discussion, but I think at that point, you know, I think we're, we have gone so far down the road that we're, there, we're, we're not prepared to spend any money on a curb just because there's some other things that have come up in the business that we need to pay attention to. So I guess my question is, um, let's put aside the issues with the municipal code and so forth for a moment. Well, you were agreeable to the uh, conditional approval when the zoning board approved it? I was, I was fine with it, but I understand that there's legal concerns with it. I get that, I get that. Um, okay, which I believe was put the wheel stops in, uh, make the two southern of the small slots um, employee only and the other two to close off those other two mm -hmm. that was what was approved by the zoning whether it was legal or not but right. that was approved and was, you you were open to doing I was, that i was fine with that okay um the other question i had for carol was you had mentioned that we would do the work when you said we would do the work would that does that mean that the uh our workers would do it does that mean we would hire it out does that hire what does it that out mean? 
Yep. So we yeah. would hire it out and manage mm -hmm. the project. Um, but at that point, you would be asking for a cost share. So the city would cost share the project. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sharice? I just uh, want to understand. So, Carol, would there be any way? I'm sorry. I'm Matt, you can go. I think we're would there be any way that the business and the city are for the purpose of getting this put up to code or put the way it's supposed to be. Um, if you're sharing the cost, they, uh, the city initially does the work and they kind of, it's like a loan, you pay it back some kind of way. You don't want to do that either. So you're just not open for anything. I think that I can't You should be here at the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was you just might, trying you to. You might as well state, think, Matt. Think, yeah. In the end, if the, <laughs> if the city really wants a curb, I, I believe that that is the cost that they should bear. For the owners that I've talked to and the business owners that I've talked to, we have no capital that we can allocate to a curb. Just because we have pressing equipment needs that we need to do, mm -hmm. and we have business I guess improvements that need to be done, and those take priority over a curb, and so over public safety, and not public safety. I, I'm, and I think that's what I'm saying is that if the idea is to return the lot as is, then we are open to that. And I guess I just need direction to say like that would be approved because, as part of this, my certificate of occupancy is being held almost hostage because of this. Um, and so that's the thing is I want to resolve this, and as a minority owner in a business, I can't tell the other owners that we need to fork over fifteen thousand dollars to make this happen um even it's if it's done on time or something i, I mean I, I, that's i think that's the case is like if the city really wants to have a curve then that is the cost that you know we're fine with the curve but we just can't pay for it right like i mean we have but if it's a if it's if it's a detrimental health and safety hazard then we will remove the spaces, but like I said, in the first four months of business, cars will continue to park like that and it will even get worse. And so we will add more gasoline to a worse problem than, than before. And at that point, my hands are tied in terms of controlling my customer base. Like I, I mean, just the same way that they park on that side, I mean, if, it, if there's police that basically want to ticket and enforce it, that's what they should do. I mean, I, I have a, another building where if people are parked illegally they're ticketed and sometimes they're not ticketed but we have to call the police anyway to say hey there's a there's a car blocking an alley right now so at what point do you bear all this onto the owner I, I don't know and I think that's where I'm asking if it's simply removing the parking spaces then I need to hear that so that I can relay that to my business partners so that we can continue to like operate our business Eric so here's the question uh, there was no um, no issue was raised by the city when the spaces were completely unmarked. If the spaces were uh, demarked, no, it was it, it was, was raised it? repeatedly by the city. Yes it? yes, it was a concern from the get go, and that's part of the problem because the lot was unstriped for a certain amount of time. People parked every which way. Mm -hmm. Then it was striped improperly and created the situation we have now. So no, but, the city was in constant communication. But created order. So in the first four months, we had no striping because of the weather. P people were parking any which way they can figure out. Mm -hmm. After we striped the lot, and even though it's done not per the ordinance, there have been no accidents, no complaints, other than it's crowded. But everyone understands two lines. That's where I put my car. And it's much easier to front out onto Broadway than it is to back out. And mm -hmm. so in a tough situation, we try to do the most creative use that we could do while striping the lot per the existing approved plans. And we decided to, to stripe it as what cars were continually to park with no lot, no lines. And so in a way, we were trying to add order. And if that's the order that we need to remove to stay in compliance with the zoning ordinance, then I just need to hear that from planning or staff. Go ahead. Dennis? 
All right, so I'm trying to think of um, ways that uh, other businesses and community groups handle um, parking um, in this area on Broadway Street. So we know that the, um, the Station Theater has uh, many different plays offered during the entire year. And most of their patrons park across the street in the Save-A-Lot lot. Uh, have you talked to the, the manager of Save-A-Lot to find out whether you could have overflow parking in their lot? I'm sure my customer has already parked there, and so... Well, that that's a good start then, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Because they only have to cross the street with their legs right. into the, and come into the store. And there is a, a, often a lots of parking in that lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think that, that it would be smart to post in your business uh, a sign uh, encouraging people to park in the save a lot parking lot if it's not uh, considered a private lot mm -hmm. and you wouldn't be in, invited to park there. Well, where I direct most of our customers is to that actual lot that's near on Ray Street, and no one wants to do that walk. So, well, that's so I've, I've pushed that for a year right now, and honestly, no one understands that they can walk across the bridge to our, our rear entrance. Yeah, right. And so and, and I think you see this in other kind of cities, this idea that I want my parking spot right in front of the building syndrome. Yeah, maybe and that needs to change. And certainly... How to change it, that's, I don't know. Well, I mean... Uh, we so, just serve hamburgers. <laughs> so, so I really do think that it would be useful to ticket illegal parking because we don't want to see parking on the sidewalk. As you should. I mean, I'm okay, completely there, in agreement with that. Great. Any other technical questions on this? Eric. So... I guess another possibility is to modify the uh, zoning appeals board recommendation by simply removing the stops from the south driveway. That would remove how many parking spaces? Three or two? From the south? If you remove the wheel stops, then the variance, I believe, is valid. And so if you amend the variance to say, no wheel stops to keep the lot as is. That is exactly why I applied for the variance. Well, no, I guess I'm, I'm th but I'm, I'm thinking of wheel stops, yes, where, where there's a curb, but how yes. wide is the space where there isn't a curb? That's the, how many parking spaces wide? One, two, three. One, two, three. Six, three. three. Just look at them, yeah. Right. One, two, three. Two, three, okay. So it's, it's currently so, six. six. I mean, it's currently the, the six southernmost spaces. Yeah. So you would lose, so the six southernmost spaces would go away mm -hmm. if that were simply a driveway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. So what are the choices, let's clarify, choices before council tonight are to pass the ordinance as you have in your packet with the four conditions which would give the uh, owner the option of either going with the configuration on ex Exhibit 4 or Exhibit 5. It would include cost sharing with the city, who would do the engineering, provide the decorative brickwork, pay for ha half the construction, for which we do not have a firm estimate yet because we haven't had an opportunity to even uh, discuss it further with the owner. Um, or if you don't act on this, what happens? If there's no action, the variance will be approved automatically. Okay. And on the you, 120th day. If you so vote days. it down, then what happens if the ordinance is defeated? Um, I s suppose if the ordinance, well, if the... Just looking I, at I, yeah, I guess if it's defeated, then... The applicant would have to come into compliance with the zone with right. the zoning ordinance right. for the parking. In in every case. Okay. Meaning we would remove the spots. You'd remove the spots. Yeah. All all of them, or just the ones that are not in compliance. Um, six. The six. The At six. least six up to twelve. Apparently, there is the two that are clear to the curb do not meet the minimum length or the access. So we would, I mean, if depending on how strictly this is enforced, then we would remove all if it's denied. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? 
Eric. It, it seems to me also that the other possibility, I'm, I'm not completely persuaded that the absence of a curb in the present, with the presence of the wheel stops, I'm not convinced that that actually presents a safety hazard. I understand that it presents a legal liability uh, because it would be in violation of our ordinance. But I wonder if we should take a look at that ordinance and see if that's unduly restricting us in, in this case and in cases like this. I, I would, um, it may be, a Kevin, if you could go back and switch the, the, the picture back or if Charlie can do it from there. But um, if you look at some of the photographs um, that show the, par the cars that are parked across the sidewalk, those, if there were wheel stops, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have anything to do with those particular cars that are parking across the sidewalk. It's just the fact that there's no curb to impede people that they are able to park across the sidewalk. So that condition would not be addressed. Mary Alice. I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. So, um, Carol, what you're saying is, is that if you have wheel stops, um, then you would prevent people from pulling into the parking lot and then parking in the sidewalk. But I guess your concern is, is that that doesn't prevent people from pulling in and parking in front of the wheel stops, which would then be on the sidewalk. I guess that's my confusion, because if anybody does that, why doesn't the city just ticket them? I mean, we ticket everybody else who does that. That, that is a perfectly legitimate thing for you to, to say. The, the issue, though, is that, well, there's the, there's, the, there's the issue with the ordinance, which is if we put wheel stops, then that de facto closes the driveway, and then we have this requirement that the driveway be closed. And it's a requirement that we've imposed on other property owners when they've discontinued the use of a driveway that at 100 percent of their own cost, they close the driveway. The other issue here, which does need to be addressed, and depending on what the council does, that'll then staff will have to figure out how we want to address it. We're, we're giving visual cues by not having a curb. So a curb is a, is a barrier to someone driving their car, you know, acro across a sidewalk or across, you know, some, you know, off of a main road. When there's an opening, that suggests, oh, I can turn there. I can do something here. That's why at, at one point we were talking about, well, what if we just narrowed the opening to look like a driveway and we gave cues as a driveway? Right now the cue, is, the cue that people are getting is they can just drive sort of freely onto this lot, and that's, that's what's problematic in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. Bill. So if we um, reject, if we turn, if we voted down the ordinance um, and voted down the variance request, he'd have to take, he, he says, Matt says he'll take out the six spaces and open up the drive. So if people continue to use it like they've been using it the past six months and still park there, does the city have any ability to ticket people that are parked in his driveway or in his lot facing the way that they're parking now? Would we be able to take it that? Yep. It's kind of a de facto All closing these, of the driveway. They park on the sidewalk, maybe. I don't. I can't mm -hmm. think of. They wouldn't if they aren't over the sidewalk, the sidewalk, and they, um, if you they aren't over the sidewalk, they're parked in. They're just parked in his driveway, basically. You can legally park in a driveway. You just can't block the right the sidewalk. Yeah, so we would be removing the visual cue that allows people to stay in a space. But if they park on the sidewalk, then absolutely ticket them. One business that has stacked parking in front of it is Paradise uh, Paradiso Cafe. Sometimes you see two people parked in their driveway, and they have a rather wide driveway. So there are, you know, now you have to go in and ask the person to move <laughs> when you want to leave, but. We see it happening all the time, and they're not ticketed. But they're also not parking on the driveway. Sidewalk. Sidewalk, Sidewalk. yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so my question is also, uh, so if we take no action at all, if there's not a motion, uh, w then what is allowed? 
then it, everything stays the way it is. No, I don't but think so. The what, variance, it, oh. what's allowed is the situation remains as is. We've, in effect, uh, granted his application by no I action. Sorry. The concern that I have, and uh, to address all, older person moves comment, is there are legal requirements. Legal requirements have a purpose. The purpose is to mitigate risk. If we allow, knowingly allow, and there'd be no question here that we would be knowingly allow, given the amount of time and attention given to this, and then we say, okay, we can allow the situation that appears on the screen now, and the back and forth across the sidewalk, and the bike lane of cars, both pulling in, pulling out, backing in, backing out, that heightens our liability. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is I don't think we have the resources to have an officer every evening or during business hours uh, patrol looking to ticket and tow these cars. Uh, and then finally, there was a pr another problem where a parking plan was requested of the owner. An email was sent to the owner to lay out so that the owner could work with the city to try and come up with a viable plan before striping occurred and the owner did not respond to that by providing any plan. Rather, the owner went ahead and striped it as he saw fit. Can I make a comment? I, I agree with everything that kind of Jim has, has stated, although you have right-of-way permits and you have variances with four other properties in the vicinity, you're knowingly allowing them with the variance or the right-of-way permit or upholding their non-conforming use. What is the different in this situation? Because you, you've used the variance process, you've used the right-of-way permit process, and you've upheld a non-conforming existing use process. The difference in the, the process difference? is applications like you were submitted and maybe the council will vote to allow your variance. Uh, maybe they won't. The difference is, is either those applicants worked with the city to develop their parking or presented a situation which did not present the same level of clear and present danger that this presented, so where they foster parking on a sidewalk. So again, there's a... Jared? Threat. So I, I have... Uh, one one question then, uh, Jim, are we uh, liable for non-conforming uses wherever they exist? No, but when we cr knowingly create a potentially hazardous situation, we can be. Every situation is different. I mean, obviously, the driver, the person backing out who runs over the bicyclist is primarily liable, but it is a good attorney will join the city in a suit. Carol? We're, um, th th this, this subject matter was, was um, kind of tossed around at the initial hearing too, which is um, Matt's view and his attorney's view is that the parking and its configuration is legally non-conforming or grandfathered in, and that was a matter that was never adjudicated by the ZBA. Just want to be clear about that. That's Matt's position, but that is something that needs to be established by the ZBA, and it was not. And so I want to just have people understand that that is not a fact. That's a representation. Bill, and Lori okay. or Kevin could elaborate on that if, if I didn't get anything exactly right. But Bill, can you take the chair? Um, Mayor Marlin. I, I normally don't weigh in on these sorts of things, but I'm going to tonight because I spend a lot of time at Broadway Food Hall, as you know, Matt. It's mm -hmm. a great place to eat. Um, this case is about safety. There is no doubt about it. We're talking about cars parking on sidewalks. And I'll tell you something else based on my personal experience there when I brought my two young grandchildren to eat. We parked in the uh, row of cars next to the sidewalk. We were getting into our car. 
car pulls off Broadway right into the space next to us, didn't see my six-year-old grandson. If he had been standing a foot farther from the car, it would have been a very tragic situation. You need to have predictability and, as Carol mentioned, cues in a parking lot. You need to, People need to expect cars pull into a driveway, they pull out of a driveway. They're going to be coming from this direction to get into the parking lot, and they're going to go leave in that direction. The way you have this thing set up now is that cars can pull off of Broadway into any one of these spots if they go up the driveway over the sidewalk. And people in the lot, people leaving the lot, walking in the lot, are subject to having vehicles coming at them from all sorts of directions. This situation that you've got here is just not safe, and it's different from every other situation downtown. And for you and anyone to say it's not about safety, I disagree. It is about safety, and for that very reason that I experienced and what I have observed in the many times I've been to Broadway Food Hall. There is no predictability about where cars are going to be coming, from what direction, how they're going to get into the parking lot. They pull in through the driveway, they pull out onto the street. They pull in from the street, they pull out through the driveway. That's what's going on here and why the city is so concerned. And, and I understand that and if that's the decision then I will tomorrow make appropriate arrangements to remove all 12 spots. But I just need direction at this point. Jared. If that's what I'm hearing. Well, in the idea of safety, I mean, I'd just like to make the, and if it's not obvious to everyone, obvious that if Matt gets his way, there's no curb. If Matt doesn't get his way, there's still no curb. Either way, we're not getting a curb in this situation from what I can understand. Yeah. And if the issue is safety, what is what is the net benefit then to have uh, the downside be on the city? It's live. See, it's one or the other. You know, our pro in one side is that the city's liability is reduced, and the con is that we do a disservice to a business owner. And on the opposite hand, the you know the the exchange is different. So, but it doesn't seem like in either way we're going to get a curb on this driveway and we're still going to have the issue of people pulling in and out because if the stripes go away that's not going to stop people from yeah. using it the way they did before the stripes were there there's no way that's going to happen Just Dennis saying. so I think that perhaps in this instance the city should uh, consider whether it would like to install the curb because that's the most logical thing to do and I think that Matt should should be um, uh, open and somewhat responsible for um, a payment plan for the future. Now, it might be a long-term payment plan, but there has to be some kind of cost sharing with your business. I think that's only fair, and this has to be a decision that um, you accept some responsibility for the activities of your customers. Charisse. And I just, this is what I, I, I want to say. I, I agree with you, um, Dennis. Um, but the other thing I want you to consider when you talk about what you can and cannot afford, sir, mm -hmm. can you afford an idiot? Because it's only going to take one, and your whole business is gone. So I want you to think about that. You will be held liable for just one idiot doing something very stupid. And I know you don't think that you can. Uh, afford this I don't know if you can afford not to so you know I, I just keep seeing you shaking your head saying I can't we're not gonna do it or we can't do it or we can't afford it I, I would love to do it but I, I and you and there you go shaking your head no so you wouldn't love to do it because you're shaking your head no but we, I don't <laughs> know if you've run a business before but we these are slim margins we I, don't have I do understand of I do $50, understand. $50,000 or $15,000. No, but we're allocate. still talking about trying to have a compromise with payment and everything. But, we have I, but one thing pay. I know that you won't be able to afford is just one idiot coming through your driveway and hitting somebody. And then that will put your whole business, your whole business liable, possibly, for that one, for that, something that could be foreseen. Because during discovery, they will see, oh, yeah well the city tried to work with them and I don't want that to happen I want I want you to kind of you know
kind of compromise. And I'd, I'd, I'd love to see you thrive. I want, I want that business to thrive more than anybody probably. But I also, there's got to be some kind of, sometimes you shake your head and go this way and say, okay, I'd love to I do that. I would love that. to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where, I, okay. Well. You can check my bank account. I, I mean, I would Thank love you. to do it. Uh, but, Eric. So okay. all of this, I mean, I don't want to say that $7,500 isn't real money. It is, and especially it's real money for a business person who's operating a business on a small margin. Mm -hmm. and I'm, extremely sympathetic, Matt, and grateful to you for what you have done for Urbana. Um, on the other hand, sometimes you can be a pretty stubborn guy. And maybe <laughs> that's one of the reasons you're a successful business person and you accomplish so much. I think that, um, I think we ought to pass this ordinance. I think we ought to go ahead and, you know, we're saying we're gonna engineer this this curb and we ought to you know do it and work out with matt and his co-owners whatever they can contribute to it uh but i think we have to get it done yeah, I, I think i'm persuaded that the situation is um is unsafe without the curb and I think a real bottom line is that nobody like Diane's grandchild or anybody like them has to be safe in that space to the extent that we can make it so. So we're, we're going to have to make that curb happen and, uh, and work, leave it to staff to work out with Matt what contribution he can make to it, but we've already agreed really in principle through the ordinance to pay for most of it, the engineering costs and half the construction. So which is, which is let's just make it happen. Which is unprecedented um, for other yeah. property owners. We haven't done it for other property owners. We're also so. supplying the bricks, yeah. which add to the cost. Okay, let's so. just, let's just. So is there a motion yeah. or is this more discussion? I'm, I'm I, I just have a question about okay. if, if, we're, if we're going off of what Dennis and what Eric is saying. So if, uh, if the proposal is to kind of put payment plan in, does anything have to change in this ordinance to do that? And are we allowing a drive or are we closing it completely? This ordinance allows either exhibit four or exhibit five, either of those options. So essentially, and if I'm understanding, if you approve it, you're essentially leaning the property owner and the business for, I guess, compliance of this. Even though we've expressed the fact that having only been open one year, well, that's to take this cost on is being forced upon us. I'm just, I just want to know if that is what I'm hearing. Can, can, can I? I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm going to try, and then Jim can, can Jim can um, interject. I think the the fact is that you can accept the variance with the conditions, it, it, whatever council votes on. If but if they vote on the conditions, you can accept those conditions, or you can go back to making all of your parking spaces legally compliant with zoning, and that would include the four at the north and all the other and all the other spaces. So you e either come fully into compliance with zoning or you avail yourself of the variance as conditioned by the council. Did I get that right? Yes. Uh, to answer, I think it was, uh, I think it was Alderman uh, Jacobson's question as part of his motion. You can move, if you are inclined, for the adoption of the ordinances, proposed ordinances drafted you cannot Im necessarily impose a condition without uh, Mr. Cho's and his partner's agreement imposing terms of a loan. I think you certainly can move to, you certainly can move to approve the ordinance with the hope uh, that some financial resolution, and by the same token, if necessary, uh, if there is no movement on compliance, 
because we are providing this for a business owner to operate his property if the city were inclined and I'm not recommending one way or the other the city could file a lien against the property Final question. Mary Alice. I swear I have one final question. Okay, so um, if we approve this ordinance uh, and the um, business owners decide not to uh, go forward with the curb and so forth as this is written, then in order for them to come into compliance with the parking rules, they would just remove the striping from everything. And then whether or not those four parking spaces exist is whomever decides to park there with the risk of getting ticketed. Is that correct summarization? I think that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Just what's been approved, which is kind of along the building edge, I guess the front door edge. I would keep those, but I would remove all 13. Um, and if anybody parked there, then we would be able to Not take necessarily. it. Necessarily. Hmm. If they're not if they're not on the sidewalk, Sharice, we can't ticket them for parking in the driveway. Oh, okay. So they could. You didn't. I, did you go there when it first opened? No. Well, when it first opened, it was a free for all. It was just anybody parking anywhere. People double parking behind people, triple parking. I mean, you went in there and it was the Wild West, whether or not your car was going to get back out. Okay. And it will return to that if the stripes are removed because people are still going to park there even if those stripes aren't there. I guess. It doesn't solve our problem. Over, over time, if the parking situation okay. continues like that, I, I believe we will lose customers. So we're prepared. Okay. Dennis. Well, it seems like the, the uh, less expensive and the less loss of parking would be to take exhibit five which leaves um, removes three parking spots but um, allows cars to flow through the through the parking lot in a manner that is understandable mm -hmm. and it would be cheaper because there would be less curb to to uh, install mm -hmm. So maybe I make a motion, and I, I, I'll, I, I did do some research, and I sent it all to you, but I don't know if you've seen it, because I did this around 4 o'clock, that Article 14 of the City Code, stopping, standing, or parking restricted or prohibited on certain streets, Section 23-187, 20, which is parking prohibited in speci specified places. Um, it reads, uh, no person shall park a vehicle except in compliance with the directions of a police officer or traffic control device or any of the following places. And number one is on a sidewalk. Number two is, talks about the distance between the, side, the, the sides of the driveway where the, a driveway exists and uh, the, uh, the, the distances around a turn, turn around or turn a point of a driveway intersecting a curb. Number four is within 15 feet of a fire hydrant. I'm not sure that we have that compliance. No, that's not there and on any area between the right of way of a property line or the sidewalk and any adjacent street to the city. So, so these are conditions that I think are part of our city code and we would have to be modifying our city code to to some degree to, uh, to um, satisfy all the conditions that we would like to see imposed in the most simple way without, without redesigning the entire project. So I guess I make a motion that we, maybe I'll make this motion. And I'm sorry because you know, I don't want to, I don't feel, I don't really want to disencourage business to be working with the city, but we also want the city to be a safe and um, understandable place for people to not only prepare their their business designs and their plats uh, and their parking plans so that they are in compliance and they're safe. So, um, so I guess I would make a motion that we approve the the um, variance and 
with the conditions. And with the conditions that a curb be installed, which will allow for a driveway on the southernmost part of the parking area for exit and entrance into the parking mm -hmm. lot. And um, there's and to allow uh, parking for employees or short vehicles in the southern two places of the northern section of the parking area and the northern two section uh, uh, parking um, slots become um, no parking it would be a bicycle or, or a motorcycle parking and there would be bollards there so that people wouldn't be able to pull in. Mm -hmm. Did I cover that? And the cost <laughs> All right. And that the city work out. All right. And then also the, um, the we're, we're encouraging the, the owner to approach the city and with his two other partners, which we haven't seen tonight, mm -hmm. and um, discuss a uh, cost share because the city is willing to assist in construction of this curb. As far as I know, we're in a the property is in a TIF, so any increment that we have generated from the investment in downtown could very well be applied to that with no resources from the city being taken away, nor any payments from the owners required that need to go to equipment or major improvements. Well, that's a conversation we haven't had with the city yet, but you might mm -hmm. well want to. And I mean, I'm open to that compromise, but at this point, representing the owners, we have no cash available to invest in a curb and so if this does go through then just i just want to caveat that well that's i guess that's my can i ask a question yeah let's get a sec was that a motion i guess that is a motion, a motion. Okay. I'm trying to make can we get a second i'll second dennis's motion all right now we can discuss um i guess that my question is uh, before you striped your your driveway, did you talk to anybody that might actually know something about how that could have been done? Yes, absolutely. Uh, otherwise than the way you did it? Absolutely. I consulted with a local contractor who has been striping lots in Urbana for 30 years. Okay, but he's not. Did you talk to anybody in the city that could have? I mean, this could have been prevented. That's all I'm saying. If maybe you had consulted somebody in the city and asked and told them, you know, we've got this major parking issue. I, yeah. I, I, what the what we submitted was what we believed was sufficient parking striping. So that is a, I guess, an exhibit that hasn't been shown. But what it does show is basically all the spots that you see currently on the entrance edge of the business. Um, but I'm asking, So that was you what, submitted information. That was what was submitted. But after opening in January and observing four months of chaos, okay. when we were able to fi finally stripe the lot, that is why we striped it the way it was to provide some order. Had we not, had we actually presented this striping plan, it, it wouldn't have made it this far. No, I'm so just saying, would it, but it, maybe it wouldn't have been this striping plan. Maybe it would have been a different striping plan if someone w with the city had been working with you, is what I'm saying. I, I, I doubt that since they are not allowed to be designers on a site. Uh, so they would probably advise me to, to ask a consultant, which I did, and, and then someone that has been striping lots in Urbana for 30 years. And so that's exactly who we used. Unfortunately, I guess, yeah, because I striped it is what triggered the zoning violation. So I guess, you know, for this discussion, what I've been hearing is that maybe there is another compromise where neither the city nor the owners can outlay capital to build a curb, or there's a solution where we basically restore it back to what was originally plan approved with the plans that we submitted, which would be to remove all those 13 spots. But you haven't front. thought of another plan where you restripe the the parking lot in a way that would fall into as, some, as, that, would that be cheaper? Is as someone I'm being there every day and observing how, how the customers park, and believe me, I've seen every single configuration possible. This is by far the safest and has, you know, <laughs> if, if it's not agreed if upon. If you're not walking on the sidewalk. Right. And so and, and if that's the case, if it's not safe, then I, I, I mean, I'm prepared to remove the spots. I just need some direction at this point just because it's gone this far. Okay. And that's all I'm asking I'm, for. Yeah, I'm just asking. Yeah, okay. Okay, Eric. So the motion that's on the floor 
actually is a little bit more specific than approving the ordinance. It's, it's actually specifying uh, the option in Exhibit 5. Is that option in Exhibit 5, uh, which calls for not as much curb as would be required to close the south driveway completely, is that approximately, is, is that consistent with the cost estimate that was in the, um, in, in that, that we saw in the memo? Yes, that was what we were negotiating off of. Okay. Um, okay. Bad cases make bad law, don't they, Jim? <laughs> Charlie, Thanks, did you Jim. have a comment before we vote? I, I wanted clarification of the motion from, from Council Member Roberts. Uh, that, that you're narrowing the staff recommendation here to one of the two exhibits. Well, I'm not sure that it's really all that helpful to try to, uh, to approve two uh, potential choices unless there's some kind of compromise and discussion and, and collaboration involved here. So, Kevin, can you explain? I mean, I, well, I'm, I'm not going to say that one's maybe better than the other, but it seems to me that one's cheaper than the other. Well, right. if, if you approve the ordinance as um, as presented, it gives both options. Okay, and I'm not necessarily wed to one or the other, but I'm just trying to be yeah, thoughtful I, I, about cost. I think flexibility is better um, is probably better, and that's not that's not removing the option in okay. in Exhibit Five. So I'd. All right, so I'll remove any, any reference to um, a specific exhibit from my <coughs> recommendation, and I'll just move that we pass. So what you're moving the is ordinance. The, the ordinance as presented. As presented. Okay. Okay, well, I, since I seconded it with the caveat that Dennis originally put on it, I'll also uh, agree to his, okay. his modification of his original motion, although I will say that Exhibit 5 looks like the one that makes the most sense mm -hmm. because it does permit people to drive through it, you know, with two entrances and egresses from the uh, from the lot, or uh, it it just seems to me to make that looks to be as though it's going to flow a lot better. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we ready to vote, Bill? Just uh, kind of final clarification. So, we, if we pass this as as written. Um, He'll have the two options to close the curb or just to unstripe the six spaces. And he says he might unstripe, well, actually, there'd be at least 10 spaces, I guess, because he'd have to unstripe the four northern ones, too, in order to be in compliance. Is that right? I'd have to unstripe them all because the ones closest to the entrance are too short for the valley. Okay. So I would, if the, the and option. That's, and that's what Matt said he'll do is unstripe those. So I imagine once he does that, um, there will still be an opportunity to negotiate something as far as closing the curb, and I guess it will be up to the city to decide at, at some point, you know, if it's a real danger and we want to do it all ourselves, if we want to increase our offer to him, then we still have that option. Correct. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council members Brown? Yes. Hazen? Yes. Hersey? Yes. Jacobson? Yes. Miller? Yes. Roberts? Yes. And Wu? Yes. That motion passes. Thank you. Okay, the last item of business on the agenda is um, a motion to consider the appointment, employment, compensation of specific employees of the city pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C1 to go into closed session. So moved. Second. Moved by Mary Alice, seconded by Eric. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council members Ammons. <laughs> or Ammons. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> Woo! No, uh, no, no. I've got to fix my, I gotta fix my <laughs> uh, sheet okay. here. Sorry. Uh, Council member Brown. Yes. <laughs> Hazen. Yes, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Uh, Hersey. Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Miller. Yes. Roberts? Yes. Wu? Yes. Mayor Marlin? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. I would like to remind council members to turn off your mics. We had a little cases of open mics last yeah, meetings. 